anatomical penises may exist, but as pre-operative transgendered women also have anatomical penises, the penis visa v maleness is an incoherent construct. We argue that the conceptual penis is better understood not as an anatomical organ but as a social construct isomorphic to performative toxic masculinity. Through detailed post-structuralist discursive criticism and the example of climate change, this paper will challenge the prevailing and damaging social trope that penises are best understood as a male sexual organ and reassign it a more fitting role as a type of masculine performance. Well, I think that was pretty straightforward. Everyone understands that. Moving along. The conceptual penis is the operative representation of the penis in society as it obtains via a variety of performative acts and statements related to and concerning gender. Conceptualization is the best way to understand the penis, as the notion of penis as a male anatomical organ suffers typical androcentric and meta-scientific limitations and errors as it is both overly reductive, in failing to represent the full reality of penis-bearing human experiences, and incoherent, as the penis itself has little or nothing to do with gender. Nah, I'm only joking. In fact, if you understood any of that, then you are full of shit. And I'm gonna tell you why. What we just heard was part of a peer-reviewed academic paper which was recently published by Cogent Social Sciences, a multidisciplinary open access journal offering high quality peer reviews across the social sciences, from law to sociology, politics to geography, and sport to communication studies. The paper's titled The Conceptual Penis as a Social Construct. But here's the thing. The two authors that wrote the paper both had a bad case of the fuck arounds the day they wrote it. They'd write a paragraph, throw in a shitload of intellectual buzzwords, then read it back. If it made any sense, they fucked around with it some more until it was utterly impossible to follow. Then they'd move on to the next paragraph and so on. The paper was specifically written to not make any fucking sense. <laughs> We see further linguistic evidence for this phenomenon as hypermasculine men often use the word dick, casual slang for the penis, as an actionable verb, to dick someone might mean to take advantage of them or to have sex with them, depending upon the constructual context of the application, the inherent connotations of dicking, and dicking over to rape culture are, here, obvious but run too far afield to our purposes to develop independently. Hypermasculine tropes often take advantage of this penis as verb rejection to express themes of male power and dominant male sexuality, confer, the frequent use of the sexually objectifying hypermasculine phrase, I dicked her good, allowing hypermasculine males to intuit the interplay of various discourses behind their subject positions and to shift them accordingly within specific settings, especially imagined and real sexual encounters with real and virtual women, or other men, as applicable. Now, if I was some other bloke right now, I'd ask me, But Baron, didn't you say it was peer-reviewed and published in some academic journal? Yep, that's what makes it so fucking funny. Twice reviewed and published by Cogent Social Sciences. One reviewer noted, It captures the issue of hypermasculinity through a multi-dimensional and non-linear process. While the other noted, Outstanding in every applicable category. Both reviewers also noted the references provided were sound. The references which included a fictitious journal called Deconstructions from Elsewhere and esteemed fictitious researchers such as S.Q. Scamron. It really goes to show the rigorous standards maintained in the field of gender studies, doesn't it? Fucking ridiculous. We conclude that penises are not best understood as a male sexual organ or as a male reproductive organ but instead as an enacted social construct that is both damaging and problematic for society and future generations. The conceptual penis presents significant problems for gender identity and reproductive identity within social and family dynamics, is exclusionary to disenfranchised communities based upon gender or reproductive identity, is an enduring source of abuse for women and other gender marginalized groups and individuals, is the universal performative source of rape, and is the conceptual driver behind much of climate change.
Good news. The scientists behind Linux have been working their cunts off lately, and they've made a breakthrough. By warping the space-time continuum or some fucking shit like that, they've worked out how to connect Patreon with Discord. It means that my patrons, new and existing ones, will be assigned a special role on my Discord server, and they'll have access to patron-only text and voice channels, where I'll be chilling for an hour or two after I publish most videos. Whether you're a new or existing patron, all you've got to do is connect your Discord account to your Patreon account, and you'll automatically be assigned a patron role on my Discord server. Fucking radical. See you there.